Thank you for listening to PoliticalStorm.com. I'm John Small. Today we're going to be visiting with another John. We have John Horvath II. He's a scholar, a researcher, an educator, an international speaker, and the author of a book called Return to Order. And he's, he's noticed during this political season, as we've been going through the election debates leading up to our presidential election but on both sides, Republican and Democrat, he's noticed that there's a, a word that's missing. So, John, welcome to the program. Uh, first of all, what is the word that's missing? Well, I mean, you've been hearing frustration, establishment, equality, jobs, all these kind of things, but yeah. what I think is missing is the word sacrifice. Oh, yeah. Not too many people want to talk about that, but I think it's a, an essential word if we're going to resolve the problems that our nation faces. So you're telling me I can't have all of that stuff and not give something up, John? Right. I mean, free college, free lunch, it really doesn't exist in the real world. No, we do have to give something up to get something back. So uh, you're, you're right. The word sacrifice is something we're really not hearing right now, are we? Right. It's what I call a cookie jar election. You know, everybody wants their, their hand in the cookie jar, but uh, cookies are only limited. And, and uh, you know, at a certain point we have to say, well... We have to give something up. So as you've been watching the debates, and I've been watching the debates, are are there things that you're seeing in this present election cycle where they're addressing the right issues and the wrong issues? Definitely. I mean, this is a very extraordinary presidential election cycle. We haven't seen anything like it. But I think it is very much um, related related to our our culture. You know, the frenetic attempt of wanting everything now, instantly, regardless of the consequences. And... You know, uh, this election is just all very strong, intense sound bites, uh, you know, slinging things here and there. It doesn't really get into the meat and potatoes of things. And it's amazing to me how mainstream media has picked some very specific things that they want to focus on, and they have focused on those things like a laser. And there are other things that get brought up at, at these debates that just kind of get swept under the rug and they don't even talk about them. Definitely, definitely. I mean, it is very much dominated by economics benefits, and it doesn't really get into, well, where's our nation heading? What's being done to teach our children right and wrong? What's being done to instill character in in, in our population? I mean, these are, you know, moral issues that really are, and cultural issues that really aren't considered. So as you're watching this and you're seeing what's happening, uh, what would you say is wrong with the whole what's in it for me approach to voting? Because there are a lot of people right now that are promising, hey, free this, free that, just vote for me and you got it all. What's wrong with that approach? Well, I think it's a, it's a problem because our nation is heading for some very hard times. And, uh, you know, when you reach when you get into hard times, you have to lower your expectations of what you're going to get from the government and assume a more personal responsibility for family and community and 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 just you know, take that take upon oneself that responsibility and you know we're not really being prepared for that right at this at this point so john how do you feel that we've gotten to this point in our society where if you think about the 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 different people that are currently up for election you know we've got one that's saying hey i want to give you all this stuff for free And then on the far other end of the spectrum, there's a guy saying, hey, I want to build a 30-foot or however tall wall. You know, how do you feel that we've kind of slipped to the point where we've gotten these complete polar opposites like this? I think it's much more a cultural thing than a governmental thing. The government obviously has a role in it, and it does uh, fuel this whole thing. But it is this this intemperance, this just giving in to to everything. And the the elections have been... uh, um, reduced to, you know, elect me and I will make you happy. I mean, that's sort of the message I'm getting from a lot of the a lot of the candidates. And now we talked earlier about the word that's missing, sacrifice. So how would the concept of, hey, vote for me, you're going to get this, but you're going to have to give this up, how would that turn the tables on, on the election process? Well, I think when people start getting the big picture, they learn that there's something more than themselves. And, uh, you know, uh, Americans... Uh, this isn't something new for Americans. We've been always been challenged by sacrifices in the past, and that's often when we uh, when we show our best side when we when we sacrifice. But uh, but it's a sacrifice that's not just saying, well, you know, you're going to have to give up your car, or give up this, or give up that. It's it's much more than that. It's just it's, um, it, it is the idea of of a sacrifice to uh, to uh, for the common good to help help society that uh, is. I think it's, it's something that uh, will do us a lot of good. So, again, visiting right now with John Horvat, scholar, researcher, educator, international speaker, and the author of Return to Order, which we're going to talk about here in just a second. But first, what are some of the other words and concepts that you think 
are maybe needed right now to get people moving forward during this election cycle? I would put in that category honor and duty and commitment, uh, family, even uh, God. I mean, all these are consonants that resonate with Americans and, you know, have been part of our political rhetoric, but they certainly not aren't there now. Yeah, those are things that you're not hearing a whole lot in the stump speeches. No, 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 exactly that. I mean, it, it, but I mean, one of the things I, I would like to mention is that, um, you know, sacrifice is a hard thing to, um, to propose, but it's a sign of a good leader in any field, you know, in business or church or any other place. If a leader can inspire people to sacrifice and to see the big picture, he's a good leader. And and quite often you see that in business where maybe they'll have. Uh, I've worked in companies where they say, "Okay, we're going to do we're going to do this uh, fundraiser, and you can wear jeans on Friday, uh, but you have to give to this fundraiser." So you're you're sacrificing something to get something that you want, and some people comply and do that, and some people say, "I don't want to take part," but everybody has the opportunity. And, again, there's some sacrifice involved. If you want to wear jeans on Friday, then you have to contribute to this fundraiser. And I think that same type of thing, now I understand that's a completely different scenario, but if we're expecting everybody to get something for nothing, where is that going to come from? Right. I mean, it has to be, the leader has to inspire. He has to be, he has to be out there in front. He has to be the role model that will, you know, will... We'll show the way. Again, visiting with John Horvat, and you, let's talk about your book, Return to Order. First of all, when did when did this book come out? It's uh, it's been out for a while, about two and a half years, three years now. But we've just uh, just put out our our fourth printing of it, so nice. It's, it's really getting out there. Well, and I know we spoke, uh, and it's been a little while back when we talked one other time about the book. It, it sounds like an exciting book for people that have not had a chance to hear that other interview. Tell us what is the book, Return to Order, about? It's a book that about economy, about a culture, and about moral values. But it's above all, it's a book that puts it all three together, just saying that, you know, what we need is to reconnect with our origins, with uh, our fundamentals, and this is what will uh, bring us back to order. You can't stimulate, regulate, or legislate an economy or culture into order. It has to come through those very fundamental institutions of family and faith and community that that keep a society and economy in balance. Where can I find a copy of the book, Return to Order, sir? You can go to returntoorder.org, and that's there you'll find it. All right. Very easy. Returntoorder.org. John, thank you so much for taking time to chat with us again today. It's been great. Again, our guest today has been John Horvat. He is a scholar, a researcher, an educator, international speaker, and the author of the book, Return to Order. You can find that at returntoorder.org. The preceding broadcast you just heard has been executive produced by Lawrence Rassen, co-founder of PoliticalStorm.com. Line produced, edited, and narrated by John Small from The John and Heidi Show and from Sunny Radio. This program is expressly for PoliticalStorm.com and its affiliated networks. For PoliticalStorm.com, I'm John Small.